So, lesson 94 is just about absolute value, any absolute value, multi step absolute value. And I don't know, it seems like we just talked about this, so I'm just going to write one down here. Two times the absolute value of x all over six is plus four equals four. Maybe this is a touch more complex than before there, but what is your first goal, Claire? Um, I see. Isolate Mr. Absolute Value. So how do I do that? What would be the first thing you do on this one? Make you nervous? Subtract 4. Oh, why do we always have to do 0 there? What would be the next thing one would do? Caleb? Multiply by 6 because that would get rid of the 6 on the bottom. Why did it have to be a 0? Next thing I do, Kala. Divide by 2. Wow, can I divide 0 by 2? I sure can. You can't divide by 0, you can divide 0 by numbers. So now I have the absolute value of x equals 0. And had this not been a 0, then what would I do? You'd put plus or minus over here. But since it's a 0, you only have one choice, and that is 0 because of this here. Do I need to go any farther than that? I don't want anybody to fall asleep, per se. Perfect. Lesson 95, children. This would be under adding rational expressions, which I think we just did too. I don't get it. But we'll do it anyway. I will pick the hardest problem possible. I should have you pick the hardest problem possible. Look at page 634. Which practice problem there would you like me to review? A, B, C, D, E, F, or G? K. Oh, this K was fun. D is a great one because it's a subtraction problem. I like that. Oh, uh, uh, do I have to write the whole thing? I guess I do. Don't take shortcuts. 2x squared over uh, 6x minus 24 minus 3x minus 4 over X squared minus 16. Really, I don't. I really don't. This is so easy, you probably consulted that I would do this, but you're not. So just skip it. Step number one, no closing. No. Huh? Right up and down. 2x squared over 6x minus 24 minus, always watch out for that, 3x minus 4 over x squared minus 16. God made common denominators, ladies and or gentlemen, which is what? What is my common denominator? Watson? You do have to factor. So what can I take out of this? A 6, correct? X minus 4. What can I take out of this? Is this factorable? Why is it factorable? Because these are both perfect squares with a minus, which means it breaks down to what, Mia? Wow, look at you. That is very exciting. Nice work. x minus 4 times x plus 4. So now what is my common denominator? Stritzel. I take the group that has the most of each factor, which would leave me with what? x minus 4. So 
Okay, another one again. Oh. There you go. My least common multiple is 6 times x minus 4 times x plus 4. 6 times x minus 4 times x plus 4. I, I think maybe we may not only break the 253.5, we might shatter it. I'm, I'm half serious on that. I don't think there's any more. I am. I can tell you, I don't think I don't think this other class is going to come. All right, so to go from this to this, what am I missing? I have the x minus 4 and the x plus 4. I still need the, so I have to multiply this by 6. Everything in here times 6. In addition to that, this is a minus sign, so it's going to be negative whatever you get. So 6 times 3x is... 18x, but it's a negative 18x because of that minus sign. 6 times negative 4 is negative 24, but there's a negative there, so that makes it plus 24. What am I missing on this one? I need the x plus 4, so it's distributive property. 2x squared times x plus 4 is 2x cubed plus 8x squared. Unbelievable. Now what? Taylor Rice? Are those your notes are looking at here? Okay, if you're on the next version of your Gideon's Bible. Where'd you get that from? What do I do now? Cameron English. Use the tractor. Tell me what you would do. What would you write down where and why and when? Oh, you would write the general. Which is? 6 plus 3 x minus 4 x plus 4. And then combine what we can on top, which means you would get what? 2x cubed plus 8x squared. There are no other x squareds minus 18x plus 24. Am I done? I'm not. Logan? Did I do something wrong? Logan? You need to simplify. How can I simplify that? It looks too complicated. Make what do a binomial? Uh, the binomial. What was the only way to factor a quad to a four term thing? Uh, do you remember? Factoring by Maggie? by grouping. But before you do that, what are you supposed to do? Which is what? What can I take out of all of them? A 2. So I take my 2 out. I'm left with x cubed plus 8x squared. No, I'm sorry. Plus 4x squared minus 9. Man, you guys, give me a chance to make one such mistake. All right, which means that 2 will cross off with a 6 and give me a 3 down here. Now, if I factor this, can I factor this by grouping? I can try. What can I take out of these first two? An x squared, correct? If I take an x squared out, I'm left with x plus 4. Now, I need to get an x plus 4 over there, otherwise this does no good. Cam Atkins, what can I take out of these two? A 3. I would maybe take a minus 3 out so I get a positive answer there. Uh-oh, I got 3x uh, minus 4. No go. It's not going to factor. So, guess what your answer is? This over this. x cubed plus x squared minus 9x plus 12 all over 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 4. Who feels relatively good about that? Did I mess that? What's that? Did I mess them up? Sure. Oh, should have four. I concur. Yeah? Raise your hand if you're sure. All right, number 96, children. Guess what this one goes back to? Graphing quadratics. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, let's... 
you're lucky. Oh, look, there's calculators there. Ooh. These are probably still. Let's do this one. Y equals 2x squared minus 9. And I ask you to graph it, you're going to tell me to do what? Go fly a kite. Okay. Logan speed. Uh, get that A, B, C. Yeah, now the problem with that is there's no B here, is there? C. Huh? C. What's what is what wait okay, so what's my A? A is A is two, B is zero, and C is negative nine. You have to think about this as being two x squared plus zero x minus nine. Alright, so that's my first what's my first step in graphing? Did somebody say find the x is a symmetry? Somebody say that. And the x is a symmetry is what? There is no reason you should not be at 260. And since b is 0, what is my axis of symmetry? It doesn't matter what anything else is, because I get 0 divided by something. What's my axis of symmetry? Where x is 0. So this is your, let's make it wider. This is your axis of symmetry. Step next is to find what? Holes. Find the max and Yeah, vertex or the max or the min. In this case, is it going to be a max or a min? Who can answer this? Land and Purdue. With this one, do I get a max or a min? Are you sure? Maximum. Raise your hand if you think you get a maximum. <laughs> Raise your hand if you think you get a minimum. I don't know about that minimum. How do I find that minimum point? How do I find the bottom? Claire? I don't know. Honestly, if it keeps going this way, we will have no man. Which is what? If I put zero in for x? No. no. <laughs> Two times zero minus nine. Negative nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's my bottom point of my parabola. Next thing is well, I'm going to find the y-intercept. Unfortunately, the y-intercept is zero, and yeah, it's at negative nine, so that's not going to give any points. So don't just show up in the middle of the class and then start talking like you are. Now what do I do? Now, Brokala, what do I do? Huh? How do I find two points? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. What? Put negative nine in it? Throw some numbers at it. Thank you, Logan. Throw some numbers at it and see what you come up with. What number is probably a logical one? I would go one. 1 times x squared is 1, or x, 1 squared is 1, 2, and you get negative 7, correct? So here at 1, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, do I really want to do negative 1? Why not? Because you already know negative 1. It's symmetrical about that point, so wherever it is at positive 1, it's also going to be there at negative 1. How about what other one? Let's do negative two. Negative two squared is four. Four times two is eight. Eight minus nine is negative one. So here at positive and negative two, you both get negative ones. And I suppose you get that parabola there. Hey, press it, ladies and gentlemen. Are we going to get to a negative two? No, but we're going to go one more. At least. Yes. We are yes. 
Number 97. Guess what it is? This will take you way back almost to the beginning of the year. Graphing linear inequalities. We could almost skip this, but I'd rather not. Let's just do one example. Let's pick a good one. Uh, oh, let's do this one. 4x plus 5y is greater than or equal to, what is it? Is it negative 10? I lost one spot. And you're supposed to graph this, by the way. What does the graph of a linear inequality look like? Somebody? Somebody say shaded? What type of an equation is this, by the way? I mean, it's an inequality, but if it was an equal sign, it would be in what form? How do you solve standard form ones? Yes, we call that xy intercepts. Now, please make sure this is the y is the number you're looking at. Y is greater than, so you're going to shade the greater side of the y axis. If this was negative, remember that flips over and you're actually going to shade the opposite, which is the bottom, but it's positive, so you don't have to worry about it. It's not this number that matters whether it's negative, it's whatever the y is that tells you up or down. So, x crosses the x-axis at, ooh, no, it's not going to work out evenly. What do we do now? What do you get? 10 divided by 4 is? Negative 2 and a half. So, negative, negative 2 and a half. What's y? Negative 2. Now, solid line or dashed line? Solid line because of the equal. And then, shading which sign? I'll throw one at you. We'll see if if I get the correct response. Oh, man, maybe a little bit of a quick. <laughs> what about this? What if x is less than four? Thought provoking is it not? What if x is less than four? Great Watson. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, here's my graph. Where am I putting the line? Um, positive 4 and the y axis. Positive 4 on the y axis? No, no, no. Here? On the x axis. Oh. Going up and down. A vertical line? Yes. That's not dash? Yeah. And then what? X is less than 4. Let's go logical. Less than four. <laughs> Less than four. Wow. Okay, one more, just cuz. Ninety eight. I don't want to give you a one. Solving quadratics by factoring. Okay, we did this before, and I'm not sure why. Maybe we did this before, but back in the book. So here, let's say you've got this problem. X squared plus x equals plus 2x equals 8. And you are asked to solve that. Can anybody tell me what I would do? By the way, it's by factoring. So Maggie Dervis, first step, set it equal to 0. So that means you move this 8 over here, which means the 8 becomes a negative 8. Right? 
Two of them would be to do what, Caleb Cook? To be a king. And a factor of the trinomial, which means you would get what times what gives me x squared minus plus 2x minus 8. Plus 4 minus 2 minus 4 plus 2 plus 4 x plus 4x minus 2. Now comes the big issue. Anybody from here on in? Alex! Yeah, if it's too hard to do, you want to know when will this be 0? Because when this is 0, the whole thing is 0. 0 times anything is 0. So when is this side 0? When x is not 4, because 4 plus 4 is 8. Negative 4. When is this 0? When x is positive 2. And you're solved. Which, by the way, we talked about this before, ladies and gentlemen, just to make some sort of eerie connection. Um, what am I going to say? To make some sort of eerie connection. Oh, you remember this part, or you remember what I was going to say? This part. Oh. Here, to make an eerie connection there, if you graph this quadratic using the axis of symmetry and all that gobbledygook, these two numbers are where that parabola crosses the x-axis. This parabola will cross at negative 4 and at positive 2. I don't know what the max and min would be, but it would definitely be one of these things. That's where you go, wow, that is a connection. Wow. Wow.